Grass Pokemon are everywhere. It is the typing with the most weaknesses though, meaning if we're gonna add a hardcore rule set, it could actually be quite a tough challenge. So can we do this typing some justice and beat Pokemon Violet? We are introduced to the starters of the game, and this is one of the few times where we're actually able to get a Pokemon, so we pick up the Sprigato. Here is the Wild Lechonk, behind which is the Pokemon Hoppip a timid Pokemon in which you must sneak up on. If you do this correctly, you will be able to capture one and make it your own. We're not done capturing yet though, so let's set sail to Kitakami. Here, we can run into the Pokemon Sea Waddle. Its cabbage-like head lets it blend in the fields very well. Also means when we capture it, we can call it cabbage. We're then introduced to Kieran and Carmine. Both have a Pokemon which is rough for us. Kieran's is Yanmar, which just so happens to be the perfect counter for us, as it is Bug and Flying type, both of which we're weak to. And we don't even get a minute to breathe, as we have to do a battle with Carmine. We're going to start off using the Home Claws to up our attack, as she's going to bite into us. We will then do the same again, and this time she is going to howl. This ups her attack. Unfortunately, we need one more if we're to stand a chance, so we do it, but she wastes the turn by going for a howl again. With this being done, we can attack with a leafage, and we get a low roll and don't quite take out, but luckily it wastes the turn by raising its attack a third time. Well, I'm not going to look a gift horse in the mouth, I'm just going to attack it and take it down. Then out comes some trouble though, the Vulpix. Vulpix outspeeds us and uses Ember, doing quite a bit of damage to us, but thankfully, we managed to have a berry so we can heal some of our health back. We can then bite and knock it into the red, which is brilliant. Because of the berry, we can survive, but it doesn't matter as they're going for spite, meaning it's free for us to finish it off. Up next is going to be a new Pokemon being Poltergeist. However, this thing is a ghost, so we need to use one bite and we've taken it down. Could have gone a lot worse, but thankfully it didn't. Luckily for us, Kieran ended up running away right after this battle, so at least we don't have to deal with that Yanma yet. We can get some moves beforehand. Phew! With that done, we're also very close to the level cap, so let's head back to Paldea and take on Katie. We're going to start off with Hoppip that can use an Acrobikes into the Nimble and take it out. Next up is her little Yarn Ball, but that thing gets untangled with an attack as well. Then last up is going to be her Teddy Ursa. It terastalizes into the bug type and we actually do pretty awesome damage to it. It decides to hit us with a Fury Cutter, but our flying makes it neutral, meaning we can just attack on the next turn and we beaten Katie and got the first gym badge. As we can see in the fields, we have the joyful Olive, excited to be part of a margarita. It'll have to wait though, as we're going to capture it. Going a bit further, we can find what they call the Chili Chick. It's quite an easy capture for us and will be a great addition to the team. Then we're finally going to have our Sprigato evolve into a Florigato. And now that we've got Florigato, we might as well take on the first Titan being Claw. It's going to start by using a Rock Smash doing decent damage, but we're going to Magical Leaf and knocking it under half and activating its Anger Shell. From here though, unfortunately, it wastes its turn and goes for a block, meaning it is free for us to take it out and this little crab will go running away. Usually, Sunflora is a independent Pokemon. You will very rarely see it with another. However, being an ultimate grass type trainer, I've convinced it to be part of a pack. I've made them so good, they've even learned to teleport. Jealous of our skills as a grass type trainer, we're actually challenged to a battle by Brassius. We're going to start with Sea Waddle, who can attack with a bug bite doing awesome damage. Even with a crit, it's just not quite enough to take it down though, so we will get mega drained. However, next turn, obviously, we will make short work of it. Smolive comes out and it can survive the bug bite as well, allowing it to tackle doing okay damage. But again, it's going to go down on the second turn. Lastly is his final Pokemon being Sudowooda, which is actually quite a nightmare. It terrestrializes into the grass type, which is beneficial, but it's got some crazy physical bulk. 
so much so that we actually switched to struggle bug here because it's slower than us it will go for a trailblaze and get its speed up and now a rock throw is coming our way i know we can't stay in so i'm gonna switch out and we're gonna bring out florigato who tanks it pretty nicely florigato is slightly faster so can use an acrobatics doing awesome damage but then sudawudu is gonna trailblaze and here, a berry should have procced a heal, but someone forgot to equip it. Yeah, that means I can now no longer survive the rock throw that's coming in. Because of this mistake, I have to make a hard choice. I have to switch into a Pokemon, but whichever one it is, isn't going to survive. Therefore, I'm going to switch into Pepper. And he actually misses. Oh, that is beautiful. Since Pepper managed to dodge, the rock throw on the next turn won't take us out and it will allow us to use a sunny day. I've also decided this Pokemon will be a lot more useful. So we're going to switch out into another one and that's going to be our Hoppip. And unfortunately, the rock throw will hit this and it will take it down. Because of the sunny day, we can bring in Sir Waddle, who does actually outspeed thanks to the sun and its chlorophyll ability allowing it to get off a bug bite and knock it to a sliver. But because it uses a trailblaze, it's going to be faster than us on the next turn. Therefore, we're going to switch into a Smoliv, who actually takes the attack beautifully, and then it can survive another, use a tackle, and win us this gym badge. With that done, I think it's time for us to get back to Kitakami where instantly Kieran is going to challenge us to a battle. A Florigato that knows acrobatics makes very short work of both of his Pokemon though, so there was nothing to worry about. The wild Nuzleaf with its Pinocchio type nose. You can tell it's a little fibber, but he's so adorable. So we're gonna have young Rocket here join the team. Also in Katakami, wild apples roam the streets. This is going to allow us to capture one and it is a ferocious dragon type. As you can see, it puts fear into the enemy's eyes. Kieran really doesn't want to let up though, so he's going to challenge us to another battle here. The first Pokemon he's got this time though is going to be a Poliwag, which uses Haze, doing literally nothing, allowing us to leafage and knock it into the red. It then does the exact same thing, so obviously we're going to take it down on this turn. Is that the only move it has? Then the Yanma is going to come out, and its air cutter actually does some pretty ferocious damage to us. However, our acrobatics will one-shot it. Then lastly, is going to come out his Furret. It ends up going for a defense curl off the bat, meaning my leafage doesn't do too much. It then does the exact same, but we've knocked it to about a third now. Then it finally attacks us with a quick attack, which will activate our overgrow ability, meaning we do awesome damage and knock it into the red this turn. Knowing I can't survive another though, we're going to switch out into Seawaddle on a defense curl. It's then going to do this again, and we're just going to use a Razor Leaf, but it doesn't end up creating and doesn't end up taking it out. Then he wastes his last turn. At least he's maxed out on defense, but it doesn't matter because he's going down here. We can then quickly get old Rocket here evolved with a Leaf Stone, giving us a Shiftry. And Carmine doesn't really want that, so she's going to challenge us to another battle. She starts off with more Pico, and we're going to start off with our newly evolved buddy can use a growth straight away as it tries to bite into us, but doesn't do much. We're then going to use another growth and the exact same thing happens, but now it's in its attack form. It does a bit more damage. It then will outspeed and bite again. However, this is the last one it's got and we can X scissor taking it out. Next up is going to be Swadloon, but the bug typing doesn't give it any immunities, so that will go down as well. Next up is going to be my Tiana, which uses an Intimidate against us, allowing it to just survive our x scissor, but it only uses a Howl, meaning next turn I can do the old Sucker Punch and one bop it. Last up is her Pulcher, guys. However, you guys have seen how that bit went, so we've got a Sucker Punch in the waiting and smash the thing away. Seawaddle then wants to evolve a bit, and it goes from looking like a cabbage to looking like a lettuce. We're then introduced to a beautiful looking grass type Pokemon. Unfortunately, it runs away before we have a chance to catch it. But we're getting too close to that level cap, so let's get back to Paldea and take on the big bird. We're going to start off with Shiftry, who can fake out and do some decent damage. But then Bombardier's going to pluck us and take our berry, which kind of messes our plan up. Because although our Rock Tomb is going to hit, it's now not going to be a one-shot on the next turn. 
This means we're forced to switch out into Florigato and we switch out on a rock throw, thankfully. We can then acrobatics, but it's not quite enough. However, it's fine because they missed their rock throw, meaning that we can take it down. However, we're instantly knocked into the next stage. Luckily, this stage is with Arvin, who actually has a perfect counter for this bugger. Instantly, we're gonna switch out and we're gonna bring in our little apple. It just ends up plucking into Arvin's Knackly though, and then a Smackdown does good damage. Next turn, it will attack Knackly again, and Knackly will retaliate with a Rock Throw, as we're just gonna use a Withdraw to raise our defenses. Now, we could talk about the entire battle, but you've seen as much as you need to see, because it only ends up hitting us once, and we end up taking it down thanks to Arvin doing the majority of the damage. The Wild Bell is roaming the fields. Some mistake it for a bin, but if you look closely, it would be a very poor bin as the trash would fall out of it. It makes good use though if we catch it and give it the name Pear. We then can finally get our fully evolved Pokemon being a Levani. Unfortunately, the Weeping Bell catch did end up over leveling our shift through though, so we can't use it for the next battle. However, we do now have access to the Syrupy Apple, which is going to allow us to evolve our little apple into a Candy Apple. And with all our Pokemon getting very close to level cap, it's time for us to just take on the boss being Giacomo. We'll start off with Florigato that can low kick into the Porniard doing pretty good damage and an Aerial Ace almost takes us out because it crits. We then heal up with a Citrus Berry. However, it doesn't matter anyway as we outspeed, so Porniard will go down here. Next up is going to be the River Room and knowing this thing can take us out, we're going to switch out and we're going to bring in Levani. It ends up using a Wicked Talk, which does okay damage. But the next turn, it's going to use a Metal Sound, and that allows us to get an X Scissor off for some pretty good damage ourselves. Not one to be attacked into while my special's been lowered, I decide to switch out and we bring in the Apple. It tanks a Snarl beautifully. And then the next turn, it's going to get Metal Sounded itself, but we use a Bullet Seed and unfortunately only end up hitting twice. From here, we can bring in Levani again, who's going to get hit with a Snarl, but it doesn't do too much. It knocks us low enough to the point our Citrus Berry activates, though. It's then going to Metal Sound, allowing us to use another X Scissor. And knowing it can't take us out here, we just allow it to get off a Snarl, doing awesome damage, but we need to use one last move, and we have beaten Giacomo. The Wild Cactus swinging its signature arms to inform you it is indeed hydrated. Welcome to the team, Orange. In Kitakami, we managed to find a Leaf Stone on the floor so we can evolve our little pair into a Victory Bell. As you can see, Lilypad moving across the water with no care in the world. We must take them from beneath in order to get the ability to capture it. Unfortunately, it ends up being level 27 though, so we can't use it yet. Not that we would have used it against Iono and her electric tribes with it being a water type though. Before we can do the Iono battle though, we have to take on Nimona again. She's going to start off with Rockruff as we start with Lee Vanit, and we're going to use a Razor Leaf, but unfortunately it doesn't take it out, allowing it to use a Rock Throw and do awesome damage to us. Luckily, we outspeed, so we will take it out on the next turn. Then we have her poor me, but this thing will fall to one X scissor. Last up is her Quaxwell, and knowing this thing is going to wing attack into us, we're going to switch out into Shiftry. She's going to terrestrialize, but she still uses the wing attack. I'm then going to use a fake out doing okay-ish damage. And then the next turn, I'll sucker punch, knocking it just over half as it almost takes us out. Knowing we can't survive another attack, we're going to switch out and we're going to bring in our victory bell. But that gets hit pretty heavy as well. Luckily, it knows the move Leaf Storm, which will wipe the floor with the Quaxwell and give us the win. With Nimona down, we might as well get right on into the Iono battle. She's first going to send out her Watchroll, but after a fake out doing a quarter, you know that a Sucker Punch is going to be more than enough to take it out. We then have her Belly Bolt come out, so we're going to switch into Levani, who takes the Spark well, but unfortunately will get paralyzed. Because of this paralysis, we're slower, allowing it to just use sparks against us as our X scissors don't do too much. Eventually, we will take it down, but at this point, we're on insanely low health. Because we're on low health, it makes sense to switch out and we're going to bring in Florigato. Florigato can seed bomb doing amazing damage and a bite won't do too much. It will knock us low enough so our citrus berry heals though. 
and then the next turn it'll go down to another attack next up is hermes magius which is going to terrestrialize into the electric typing and use a confuse ray against us but it's fine because we don't hit ourselves and we can u-turn out of there we're going to choose to bring in the Shiftry. Because it's Terrasalized and lost its Ghost type, we can end up faking it out. We then try to go for a Sucker Punch, but unfortunately, it uses Confuse Ray and confuses us. Then, to make matters worse, next turn, we'll hit ourselves. However, thankfully, Hex isn't doing too much. Next turn, we will hit through with this Sucker Punch, and the Hex it uses will knock us into the yellow, but our Citrus Berry will get us healthy again. Unfortunately, yet again, we're going to hit ourselves and it actually knocks us quite low to the point where I don't want to risk hitting ourselves again. So we're going to switch into Diplin. Diplin gets hit pretty heavy and then Miss Magius will go for another Hex and knocking it low. However, again, we're going to heal, but it doesn't matter as a Bullet Seed is all we need to take it out. Our little Olive is now finally ready to evolve at this point. And now we can get a Firestone. We might as well get ourselves a Skull Villain. And that's going to lead us into what could be one of the worst fights, the Fire Trainer being Mela. We're going to start with Lotad that can set up a Rain Dance, which makes the Flame Wheel coming in not take us out. Unfortunately, though, it will burn us. We're then going to use a Surf, which doesn't quite take it out, and a Clear Smog will wipe the floor with our Lotad. A Ludicolo would have been awesome, we just couldn't get that level 28. My next best is going to be Shiftry, and I expect it to take out with a Sucker Punch, but Torko just holds on, allowing it to clear smog again, doing great damage. Obviously, next turn, we'll finish it off, and then out comes the Starmobile. This thing's going to hit us with a Blazing Torque quite heavily. However, we can use a Rock Tomb doing decent damage. On the next turn, it will Blazing Torque us again, and this time it's going to burn us. So although we do get another Rock Tomb off, our damage was halved, and the Burn Tick on this turn will finish off Shift Tree, losing one of our best Pokemon. Two unlucky burns in one battle, that sucks. And then bring out Scoville, though, which thankfully is a fire type, so all the attacks are neutral. And with it knowing Stomping Tantrum, it's doing more damage than they're doing to us. Meaning it just takes a matter of time, a bit of healing from a Citrus Berry as well to make sure we don't go down. But we will take it out with Scoville. However, it's come at the cost of two of our team members. Here, you can see the tumbleweed going along. However, this is entertaining content, so we must catch it. Welcome to the team, Fig. And that is then going to lead us into the Orthorn battle, but we have a Scoville, which can just use one flamethrower and chase that worm away. Our little tumbleweed is then ready to evolve into a Bramblegast. And that is going to lead us into another Kieran fight. We're going to start off by using Hex and knocking it for about half as it air cutters and activates our ability, giving us an attack boost. Obviously, next turn, we're going to take it down and that is going to bait out the Diplin. We'll start by using an infestation against it as it uses a Dragon's Breath Thankfully, not paralyzing me. We can then Hex doing pretty decent damage, but they do knock us low this turn. Because we're low, I don't want to stay in, so we're going to switch into Levanate, but it just defense kills on the switching. I protect to see what's coming. It's just a Dragon's Breath, and that means I know next turn I can use an X Scissor and win. Next up is going to be Poliwhirl, and I use a Fell Stinger, not doing too much damage as it uses a Haze. Because it decided not to attack me, I am free to take it down here with a Razor Leaf. Lastly is Fura, but it really can't do too much to us, and it only takes us two X Scissors, and we've taken it down and won this battle. We then have to progress a bit further in Kitakami, and we get to see this beautiful Crystal Pool, or a Milotic is going to attack us. Unfortunately, Milotic is a water type, so the grass typing annihilates it. And since we're so close to the level cap, let us get back to Paldea and start the battle against Kofu. We're going to start off with Florigato and we're going to use a Seed Bomb against the Veluza, but it survives in the red and then plucks, stealing our berry and healing itself. With us having the speed advantage, I opt to go for a U-turn this turn, which will take the Veluza out and give us a switch in for free. We're then going to switch into Diplin as he is going to send out 
is Wugtrio. Wugtrio is going to headbutt us, and unfortunately, we're going to miss our Syrup Bomb, meaning we're both going to take damage from this Sandstorm. He headbutts again, but luckily, this turn we hit, and we actually end up one-shotting it. But the Sandstorm is going to chip me and activate my Citrus Berry. Next up, we've got his Crabominable, which is going to Terrastalize to give itself that water type. However, all it can do is miss a slam as we syrup bomb it. Because it's now covered in the candy, it is going to lose speed at the end of this turn. And that means it can't withstand us attacking it on the next turn, giving us the fourth gym badge. It is then time for us to hatch an egg. Inside is a magnificent turtle with a nice little leaf on its head, which we're instantly going to evolve and get ourselves a grottle. Unfortunately, that is going to lead us into another battle against Kieran. He starts out with his Yanmar, which actually hits me insanely heavy with a bug buzz, but luckily our acrobatics will take it out. Next is his Gligar, and knowing I can't take this thing out, I decide to switch into Bramblegast, who gets hit with an air slash quite heavily. Luckily, we had a berry to heal our health. From here, we're gonna bullet seed. It does get a crit on the first turn, but then we only hit one more time, so we don't even knock it to half health. And on top of that, it's gonna hit an aerial ace, and it's going to crit us, which is going to take down our Bramble Ghast. Losing a team member to Kieran, of all people, really sucks. What we're gonna do now, though, is we're gonna bring out Victory Bell, who can at least set up a Reflect. With the Reflect up, we can use a Power Whip, which is going to finish the Gligar off. We can then Leaf Storm the Cramoran, almost taking it out, but it's going to use Surf, knocking us half and using our Berry. I'm then gonna Power Whip, and this is going to take the Cramoran out. However, because of its ability, it picked up a Pikachu and lobs it at us, doing damage and paralyzing us. This means when Poliwhirl comes out, I really don't wanna be staying in, so we're gonna switch out and we're going to bring in Levani. It uses a Liquidation, which really doesn't end up doing much, and our Razor Leaf almost takes it out, as it hits for Pathetic with a takedown. Obviously, this means it will go down on the next turn. Then we have Diplin. We can x it doing amazing damage as it wastes the turn by going for a defense curl, meaning Kieran has wasted all his moves and we have beaten him. Losing a team member really sucks, but at least we got past the battle. Kieran then gets angry and he actually manages unleashing the loyal three, which are going to run away from us in fear. We then run into them a little later and they're actually bullying the ogre pond. Now, we're not going to have this, so let us start fighting the monkey dory. It clear smogs us and does amazing damage on turn one. However, obviously, we're going to heal ourselves because we've been knocked under half. Our struggle bug then comes out because that's going to lower its special attack, meaning it does less damage. It then goes for a flatter, which is going to confuse and raise our special attack, but it's fine because we hit through it with an X-Scissor for awesome damage. It then opts to do it again for some weird reason, even though we're already confused. And that's a mistake because this is going to be the last turn it lives. This will chase them away from Ogre Pond, but we're not done with them yet. At this point, our Grottle is going to become the beast that is Torterra ideal for the battle we have up next that battle being the battle against the poison team star member atticus we're gonna lead off with our vile plume and that is going to make him use a sucker punch into us turn one allowing us to use an encore sticking it into it with that we can switch out and we're gonna switch into torterra obviously Torterra can then use two curses, and this is going to be where the Encore ends. He's then going to use a Toxic against us, but we've equipped a Petra Berry to heal that, and an Earthquake will take him down. And even though we are slower than everything, nothing is doing any major damage to us. Therefore, we can sweep through the entirety of Atticus's team with Earthquakes, taking almost no damage. Now that the level cap's a little bit higher, we can get into another battle against Monkey Dory. Monkey Dory's going to try and spite us, but obviously it fails because it went first. And then the Morpico's going to use Aaliyah, lowering the defense. From here, we can Earthquake, doing pretty decent damage to it, but taking down the Morpico as well. Next turn is going to spite again, locking 4 PP off our Earthquake. And I forgot to heal before this battle, so we actually have 0 left in the move, so it fails. 
meaning my Tiena just has to bite it. Having no PP, I decide to switch into Skull Villain, who obviously the spite is going to do nothing to, allowing my Tiena to attack again. Monkey Dory wastes its last turn, allowing us to get a Stomping Tantrum off, and then my Tiena will finish it off with a bite. This is going to give us the Wellspring Mask. But there's three of these things, so let's get into the next fight against Okie Doggy. We're going to start things off by getting Poison Fanged into our Victory Bell as Morpico does nothing with a Thundershock. However, our Sleep Powder hits and puts it to sleep. From here, we can switch into Torterra as it stays asleep as Morpico does nothing again. From here, he will stay asleep, allowing more Pico to attack and us to use a curse. Next turn, it will wake up though, Poison Fang into more Pico and actually poison it. More Pico again doesn't do too much and we use a second curse. Okie Doggy is then going to low kick into us doing all right damage as more Pico Thundershocks again, this time paralyzing. However, we'll use our Earthquake and take more Pico down. Luckily, this sends in her Mighty Anna who will get an Intimidate off. Then it'll use a takedown. Okie Doggy will get stuck in paralysis, allowing us to get a free earthquake off, but it will take down the Mighty Anna. Ulchi Geist will come out, give us full health thanks to its hospitality, though. Ulchi Geist is going to Mega Drain, not doing too much, and a brutal swing knocks it low, setting it up to go down to our earthquake. And then I wish I could say that anything happens, but honestly, it really isn't touching us, and it just takes us a few more earthquakes before we take it down. We've then got the Pheasant Dippity battle, but this thing really does next to no damage to us, and our earthquakes do pretty severe to it. So I'm not even going to waste your time. We get through it with ease. And now we've taken then, we can strut into town with our Ogre Pond. From here, Florigato is finally going to evolve into Meowscarada. And that will lead us into the next battle, being the fifth gym leader, Larry. We're instantly going to use a flower trick into Kamala, almost taking it out. And it's going to use a yawn against us. From here, we can take advantage of U-turn, taking it out and giving us a free switch. Ivani versus the Dunsparce. We're going to start off with an x which will crit. And it's going to glare and paralyze us. Unfortunately for us, it's going to use a Hyper Drill doing big damage next turn. And we're going to get stuck in Paralysis. And then even more, unfortunately, the same again is going to happen the next turn and we're too low to stay in now. I'm going to do a switch and bring in Victory Bell, but it does major damage with its Hyper Drill. And I really don't want to stay in, so we're going to switch into Diplin. However, this time it used Glare to paralyze us. We're going to stay in, let it Hyper Drill us, doing less than half, and we can Syrup Bomb it. We can then survive another attack on the next turn. We'll heal a little bit from our Berry, but it doesn't really matter as our Syrup Syrup Bomb takes it down here. Lastly is his Star Raptor, and we're going to switch into Torterra as it terrestrializes into the normal type and uses an Aerial Ace. Knowing I'll survive another turn, I lay Aerial Aces again, and this time I'm going to use an Earthquake, knocking it to about half. From here, we can't survive, so we'll switch into Meowscarada, who gets hit with an Aerial Ace and almost taken out. However, it doesn't matter as all we need to do now is use a flower trick and we've won this gym badge. But Nimona doesn't want to give us time to rest, so let us get into a battle against her right away. She's going to lead Lycanroc, which will Acceleroc, doing some decent damage, but our flower trick will KO her. Gumi is then going to come out next, but that will fall to just one acrobatics. Next up is her Pomo, but we do outspeed, allowing us to flower trick it and knock it in one. And lastly is her Quaquavel. This thing will terrestrialize, knocking it to a pure water type, and we're going to flower trick, but not quite take it out. This is going to let it use an Aqua Step off, and that sucks because it actually raises its speed. Now that we're not going to outspeed, we need to switch into something. So we're going to switch into Victory Bell. Victory Bell takes an Aqua Jet pretty well. And on the next turn, it is going to Aqua Step, almost taking us out. But luckily for us, the Leaf Storm is hit on the next turn, winning us this battle. In the Snowy Scapes, we run into the Wild Yeti. As a progress trainer, I know we can tame it with a ball, though. 
and we can instantly make this thing into the humongous beast it needs to be. That done though, let's head back to Kitakami and we're gonna take on Kieran for the last time. We'll acrobatics into the shiftry, one shot in it. Unfortunately, his Yan Mega is gonna follow the same fate as well. His Polyrath is gonna come out next and we will knock it to a slither, but it tries to belly drum. Obviously that fails. And that means we basically took that down in one as well. Next up is Gliscor. Now I know I can't one shot this thing. So we're actually gonna switch into our new team member, Abomina Snow, who tanks an Aerial Ace beautifully. Gliscor then opts to use a Harden, but we're just gonna use an Ice Punch. Luckily, getting a crit and taking it down. This will bait out his promo pass and I don't have a good move for it. So let's switch back into Meow Skarada, who it won't do too much to. We can then low kick, but it will hold on because of its sturdy, allowing it to get another power gem off against us. However, we can use a U-turn to take it down here. This gives us a free switching back to Abomina Snow as his last Pokemon is Diplin, and we can use an Ice Punch Four times effective, so obviously it'll go down here. And yeah, that was the last battle against Kieran. A bit anticlimactic, but oh well. Now, we're supposed to catch Ogapon here, but firstly, it wants us to battle it. However, unfortunately for Ogapon, all of its forms can be one shot by us, allowing us to catch it fairly easily. And that is going to lead us on to the final battle of the DLC being against Carmine. She leads my Tiana and we're going to lead with Lee Vanny. We'll start off by using a Fell Stinger, knocking it to about half. It then uses a Fire Fang against us, but doesn't take us out, meaning all we need to do is use one more and we'll finish it off. This leads her into her Ninetales, which I don't want to face in. So we're actually going to switch into our new team member, Ogapon who we gave the Wellspring Mask to, giving it a water grass type. From here, it can use Ivy Cudgel and its water type thanks to the mask, so Ninetales doesn't stand a chance. Next up is Levani, so we're gonna switch into a Bomber Snow, who gets its speed lowered on the switching because of a string shot. Levani will then drop our speed yet again, not that it needed to, but we will one shot it. Next up is Sinistar, which is going to hit us with a foul play and not doing much, and our ice punch will one shot it from there all that's left is more pico but i don't fear this thing it's uproar does nothing and we will blast the thing away with a golem punch and with that we have finished the teal mask dlc and sent kieran insane before progressing we're gonna evolve our cacnea into a cacturn and Dolive is gonna get a bit stressed out, so it will become an Arbilova. That being done will lead us into the Rhyme Battle. We're gonna start off turn one by using a Sucker Punch into Mimikyu to break its disguise. And then I'm gonna go for a Flower Trick, which should have taken it out, but it just manages to hold on. This is gonna allow Mimikyu to get a slash off against us and Burnett will be able to use an Icy Wind lowering our speeds. Luckily, we had a Berry equipped to heal up our Meowskarada a bit though. From here, we're gonna Sucker Punch into the Burnett and then Mimikyu is gonna slash into the Cacturn doing decent damage, but again, we had a Citrus. Now we can use Meowskarada to U-turn and that's gonna give us a free switch into Ogapon. From here, Rhyme's crowd is gonna give us a bit of a boost and that means they betrayed her because after she terrestrializes with the Toxtricity, we can use a Sucker Punch one-shot in Houndstone and a Throat Chop into Toxtricity winning us this gym badge. We then have Iron Treads, but our newly acquired Ogapom just needs to use an Ivy Cudgel and that thing will go down. That being done is going to lead us into another Nimona battle. Ivy Cudgel is gonna one-shot the Lycanroc. Throat Chop will slice down the Sligu. It then won't do too much to the poor mop, but it just uses a Thunder Wave. From here, we're going to switch out and into Meow Skarada. It gets hit with a spark and unfortunately gets paralyzed. It then gets hit with an arm thrust, the second of which crits. Luckily, we had a citrus berry to heal us. Then the next one is going to do the same. 
Thankfully, it only hit three times, though. Otherwise, we would have lost me as Garada here. This will let us use a U-turn, and we're going to bring in Arbilova. Unfortunately, we will get hit with a Thunder Wave, but it's fine because an Energy Ball will finish this little bugger off. From here, we've got her last Pokemon being Kukwavel, which obviously terrestrializes into a Plain Water type. It's then going to Air Slash, which doesn't do too much other than activate my Seed Sower ability, giving us Grass Terrain, upping our damage, and our Energy Ball will now one-shot. Damn, we really have Cacturn showing us some emotion here. Definitely not creepy at all, is he? And after this, that is going to lead us into the seventh gym battle being against Tulip and her psychic types. We're going to lead with Meowth Skarada, and we can start off with a Night Slash not quite taking the Ferrigarath out, but its crunch really does nothing to us. We can then finish it off with one more, and out comes Gardevoir, but we have Flower Trick, so obviously we're gonna take this bugger out. Espathra's up next, but you've seen we've got Night Slash, a stab dark move, obviously we'll finish it off. And then Floor just comes out, and this thing could have been tricky, but it terrestrializes to become Psychic, weak to our Night Slash, and that will let us take it down here. And to be honest, there really is nothing to do between now and the next gym. So let's get right into Grusha and his ice types. Rossmoth is up first, but we've got our lead Scovillain who can flamethrower and wipe it out. Next up is Beartick, and unfortunately that thing is going to follow the exact same fate. However, now we have Titan with its heatproof ability. That means when we use our flamethrower, it'll only do about half damage to it and let it use an ice spinner, almost taking us out. Luckily, we can heal so we can at least take another one. Not that we need to because the flamethrower will finish it off this turn. Lastly is Altaria and this thing to rastalizes to become pure ice type. And on top of that, we've got the move overheat. That is ensuring we wipe the floor with it and get that eighth gym badge. And with that done, we might as well get onto Ortega because we can start taking him and his fairy types down. We're going to start with Victory Bell, who's going to use a stockpile to raise both its defenses while Azumarill charms lowering our attack. We're going to do it again as it's going to go for bounce. However, we equip Protect, so the next turn it can't touch us. This will enable us to max out our defenses. It's going to try Bounce again, but it really doesn't matter as we're just going to use the same strat. We can then Sword Stance, which is going to get us back to neutral attack as it tries to go for another one. And then I try Sword Stance in again, but he's decided he wants to switch to Charm. We have this back and forth for a good while, but honestly, we are getting nowhere. Because he's doing this, I decide just to switch to a Poison Jab, which almost takes him out, but then he's going to charm me again. Not wanting to be on negative attack, I am going to start the Swords Dancing again, and eventually he does end up using a Play Rough, so I'm neutral on my attack. We also had leftovers on there to heal ourselves a bit. And then see if he's going to attack again by using another sword stance, but he switched back to his charm. So it's just time to take him out with a poison jab. Wigglytuff is then going to come out and I'm going to try use a sword stance against that, but it's doing the exact same thing. So we might as well poison jab it and finish it off. Dash Bun will crunch us and that will actually end up lowering our defense. And our poison jab doesn't quite take it out, but luckily we get the poison. And that means after this turn is over, the poison will take it out. And then next in is his rev room. But honestly, we do pretty awesome damage with a poison jab. And thanks to the leftovers recovery, plus him not doing too much damage to us, we really have nothing to fear and beat it with ease. One that isn't going to be as easy, though, is going to be Eri and her fighting types. Victory Bell is going to take a poison jab pretty decently, but we're going to try use Sleep Powder and unfortunately miss. Knowing it won't take us out, we'll stay in, let it poison jab again, and this time we do connect with our powder, putting it to sleep. With it asleep, we can set up a Reflect to stop physical moves doing as much damage to us. And then we're going to switch out and we're going to bring in Meowskarada. Luckily, Toxicroak stays asleep. We can then Acrobatics and that will wipe the floor with this bugger. After this, we're going to have Persimian. Now, we go to use Acrobatics against it and don't quite take it out, allowing it to use a close combat against us, almost finishing us. I really expected to one-shot, so we've taken a lot of damage, but at least we will take it out this turn. 
and had it not been for the reflect, we would have gone down. It's not safe against Annihilate though, so we're gonna use a U-turn and we're gonna switch in to Leavani. We'll get hit with close combat, but it's bug type makes it so it's not too bad. We then Leaf Blade, which gets a crit, but even after the defense drops, it doesn't take it out. Damn, that sucks. This lets it retaliate with a fire punch, and that is obviously gonna wipe the floor with our leave on it, losing us another team member. From here, we can bring in our Ogre Pond and use an Ivy Cudgel to finish him off. Then we have his Lucario, but it's fine because we can use a Growth. The Aura Sphere it uses doesn't end up doing too much to us. Seeing how little it did, we're gonna use another Growth as we take a bit of damage. But we're going to synthesis on the next turn to get our health back and we actually heal more than he does to us. This means we can get to a point where we're above half health, we can use an Ivy Cudgel and obviously it'll go down. And that's going to lead us into her last Pokemon being the Reveroom. We're going to Ivy Cudgel which does just over half but activate its stamina giving it more defense. It will then combat talk into us doing good damage and on top of that getting a paralysis. Now that we're paralyzed, we're actually slower, so we can't take it out this turn. Therefore, we're going to have to switch out. We'll switch into Scovillain, who does take pretty decent damage from the combat talk. But it can withstand another, so we let them go for a shift gear as we use an overheat. And it just survives on a sliver. It definitely can't survive after a shift gear, so we'll switch into Diplin. Combat talk doesn't do too much. It'll then shift gear again, but it's too little too late as we use a syrup. Oh, we missed. And with that shift gear, we've got to let Dippling go down here. Oh, no. It survived on 8 HP. Oh, you failed us, but at least you brought it back. We can use one last syrup bomb and we've beaten Eri. That being done, we've got one more challenge and that is going to be Don Dozo. We can use a flower trick against it, doing awesome damage as it uses a water pulse and unfortunately we get confused. Creedence is going to tail it, but it doesn't really matter. We then will end up hitting ourselves on the next turn and it's going to go for an order up doing awesome damage to us. Greedon will get a bit of chip with a takedown, but at this point, we're too low and I don't want to stay in, so we'll switch into Victory Bell as not to risk anything. Not that it matters as it missed its attack and Dondozo knocks it to the red, but now all it takes is one poison jab and we finish Dondozo off. However, it had a Titan in its belly. It had the Tatsugiri, so let us take that off. We're going to Flower Trick into it, which does about a quarter as it will taunt Greedent. This makes Greedent fail its tail whip. We'll then flower trick it again, and that's knocked it pretty low. And this time it decides to taunt us, allowing Greedent to take down and knock it in range of one more attack going down. Like literally, it just had to attack us with an icy wind, and this could have been rough, but it decided against it. And with that, we're gonna get led on to the Elite Four. The first battle of which is going to be Rika and their ground types. We're gonna start with Arbilova, and Whiskash is faster and it will manage to connect with a Blizzard, but that activates our Seed Sower ability, setting up a grassy terrain. Then our Energy Ball wipes the floor with it. From here, we have Camerupt, and obviously we're not gonna stay in against this, and we can switch into our ogre pond because the rock typing makes fire attacks neutral all it matters is it went for a yawn well i don't want to go to sleep so let's switch into torterra it yawns torterra as well well i can't really be bothered with this so we're going to use an earthquake yeah we don't quite take it out and the fire blast does big damage to us lucky we can heal with a citrus berry oh now we're asleep we're in a pretty rough situation because we'll always stay asleep here. So the best Pokemon to switch into, honestly, is going to be Scovillain as Fire Blast shouldn't do too much. From there, we can Energy Ball and that will take down the Camerot. Next up, we have Donphan and all we're going to do here is we're going to switch into Diplin. Diplin won't take too much from a Stone Edge and then it can use a Syrup Bomb next turn to almost take it out and start the speed lowering. But the Poison Jab does a lot to us. I opt to go for a recover and it actually ends up working out as we're healing more than the damage he's doing. But Diplin won't be that good for the next person. So let's switch out into Meowth Garada who almost gets taken out because they crit us. 
But then at least we can take it out with a flower trick, eh? Because of that crit, we actually can't do anything to Dugtrio. This thing has Sucker Punch. Therefore, we're going to have to switch out. So we'll switch into Arbilova. The thing we did as well is otherwise we'd have been taken down by the Sucker Punch. Unfortunately for us, it is going to go for a Sandstorm here. However, it doesn't stop us from hitting our energy ball and taking it out. Next up, we've got Clodzire. It's going to Terrasilize, and then it's going to end up protecting. Can't protect two times in a row, though, so we'll energy ball almost taking it out. But it'll retaliate with an Earthquake doing next to nothing. And yeah, right, like, we're faster than it, so it's never going to beat us. Therefore, we're just going to take it out with ease. This will end up leading us into another battle, being against Poppy. We decide to go for a growth first turn as they're just going to set up stealth rocks. We can then use a flamethrower and sweep all of her team up until we manage to get up to the Magna Zone and that will survive because of its sturdy. Then it's a bit rude. It's going to set up a light screen, meaning we're going to do less damage, but at least we will take it out this turn. Lastly is her Tink Ton, which is going to Terrasolite into the pure steel type. It's then going to use a Stone Edge, which doesn't quite take us out, and our Citrus Berry will allow us to survive another. And because of the Light Screen, Flamethrower won't take it out. Even though we can survive another, we've already lost Pokemon to crits, so I decide the safest thing to do is switch into Torterra, who won't take any damage at all. She then retaliates next turn with Gigaton Hammer and manages to crit, almost taking us out, but it's not enough. We can hit her with an Earthquake now, and we have taken her down. Next up is Larry and his flying types, but we've actually equipped the Stone Mask to our Ogre Pond. This means when we use Ivy Cudgel, it'll be Stone type, and it one-shots Tropius. Next up is Star Raptor, which Intimidate will make it so we don't take it out. So all we need to do here is switch into a Pokemon that won't be taken down by the close combat. Obviously, Diplin is the answer. Now, knowing they won't be going for a close combat, we can switch back into Ogre Pond. The Brave Bird does okay damage, but then we can just Ivy Cudgel and take it out. And unfortunately for Larry, we can Ivy Cudgel every single one of his Pokemon from here, one-shotting them all and giving us the win. That leads us on to the final member of the Elite Four, being Hassel and his dragon types. Our Abominous Snow is the perfect counter as we can use Ice Shard against Noivern, one shot in it, and we had priority so it doesn't even get to do damage. Dragalge will come out next, but we outspeed so we can Ice Punch and take that down too. Next up is gonna be Haxorus and we use an Ice Shard against it, doing about half as a Iron Heads. This will allow us to use another one and take it out next turn. And the reason we use these was because Iron Head can flinch and I have flinched a lot of times to that in past runs so i don't want to do it again here then flapple is well flapple so we take that down very easily and that's gonna lead us into his ace being back scalibur and unfortunately we have to make a sacrifice here there's nothing safe to switch into so we have to let abominus snow go down you really did do a lot for us and thank you for basically clearing this battle. As sad as it is, it will allow our Ogre Pond to come out and on the next turn, use a Ivy Cudgel and take them down. A great losing a member so late in the Elite Four, but honestly, I think it was the best call here. No time for mourning though, as we've got to get right into the next battle being against Gita and, well, everything. <laughs> we'll lead with our Meow Skarada, who can use a Night Slash straight away and obviously get rid of the Espathra. Against Gogo, -Go, we can use a U-turn and we can bring in our Skull Villain. The play rough doesn't end up doing too much to it. Skull Villain can then Flamethrower, which will finish it off. King Gambit's up next, but its Steel Typing makes it weak to Flamethrower, meaning we will take this down in one. Next up, she sends out Avalug. Obviously, she hasn't got the memo. A special Defensive Weak Pokemon, Flamethrower, it does the job. Then we have Veluza come out. With Veluza, we can use an Energy Ball, and that will take it down. And that's going to lead her into her last Pokemon, Glamora. We're going to switch into Torterra, and then she's going to Terrasilize, losing the Poison type in. I was expecting the Terra Blast because she's now a Rock type, but unfortunately she went for Sludge Wave, so it does a lot more damage than I wanted. She'll then Sludge Wave again, which does good damage, and our Earthquake isn't quite enough to take it out. Unfortunately, Torterra is a range for being taken out, so I decide the best port of call is just to switch into Meowskarada. 
gets poisoned on the switch in, but it's fine because the sludge wave won't. All right, critters. It critters and we've lost our starter now. No. Two Pokemon in two battles. That's way too much, man. Oh, my God. On the plus side, Ogapon can come out and Ivy Cudgel, but that really sucks, man. We lost our Pokemon even if it did win us the battle. Especially because Meowskarada was actually the perfect answer to the next battle being Director Clavel. It's fine, though. We can lead with Ogapon. It knows Throat Chop, and that will deal with the Oranguru. Bonus Snow is going to come out, but we can use our Rock-type Ivy Cudgel, and that will take it out in one. Then it's going to come out his Gyarados, which intimidates us, lowering our attack. But 100 base power, stab, and super effective. Obviously, we still take it out. He thinks Poultry Geist might be a change to what's happening, but we're just going to throw chop and wipe that out. Then Amoongus comes out, and this thing is genuinely scary. So we're going to switch into Torterra, who unfortunately gets toxic. Can use an Earthquake, knocking it for a bit more than half, as it's going to use a Hex. From there, I raise a leaf because I don't want to take it out, and that's going to allow it to attack me again. But at this point, we can't stay in, otherwise we will lose our Torterra. So let's switch Ogapon back in. Hex really doesn't do much to it. It can then Ivy Cudgel and take the Amoongus out. And his last Pokemon is going to be Skeledurge. Unfortunately for Skeledurge, it's weak to the Rock type. So obviously we managed to get past that with one attack. After that, we're going to have Penny. But a fun little fact, if you have a Dark type, it will solo this. We decided to give growth to our Cacturn, give it some leftovers. And that's going to allow us to max out its attack. Combine that with a couple of trailblazes to up our speed twice. And what is there to worry about? Poison jabs, sucker punches. That's all you really need to be able to take down evolutions. However, now we have come into a bit of a problem. All our Pokemon are incredibly close to crossing the level cap. So I decide we're just going to take Arvanon with two Pokemon. Will this be the end of the run? Diplink can self a substitute, which... Thankfully, won't be broken by the incoming body slam. It can then use withdraw. And because we've got leftovers, we're healing back every turn. So he can't do enough damage to us. Withdraw raises our defenses. So each substitute is making it harder and harder for him to get through. And once we've got our defense maxed out, we can then start using growths. Same strategy. We managed to stay healthy and we can get our attack to plus six. Once at plus six, unfortunately, there is very little he can do. We can just use dragon pulses and we will end up one shotting every single one of his Pokemon. Even if a few do get a couple of attacks and knock us very low by the end of the battle. One downside of this, though, is it has now overleveled Diplin, so it won't be usable for the rest of the run. And all of that is going to bring us into the final battle against champion Nimona. Removed all masks and pure Ogapon is going to come hitting with an Ivy Cudgel one shot in a Lycanroc. Gudra can then get super powered, which will drop our attack and defense. But the Ice Beam is special, so it won't do too much. But it freezes. Uh, at least the Citrus Berry knocks us out of range of being taken out. But that really sucks. I decide to chance whether I thought out. But unfortunately, I don't. And that's going to let it use a Sludge Bomb and doing big damage. From here, I don't want to lose Ogapon. So we'll switch into Cacturn, who the Sludge Bomb does major damage to. And unfortunately, it poisons us. We have leftovers to get a little bit of health back. But the poison damage... Oh, it leaves us on one HP. Or at least he can go down swinging. We can suck a punch, take the Gudra out, and then that's going to drop our cat turn. Thank you for giving us this one last chance. This means she's going to send out the Dunsports as we send out Torterra. Torterra can then start using curses because all of her Pokemon from here on out are physical attackers. You can see that the Dunsports isn't doing too much to us, so we do manage to get up to plus six. Also helps that we have Synthesis to recover if we get incredibly low. Once maxed out and healthy enough, we can use an Earthquake into the Dunsports and take it out. Then Pormot is going to come out and it'll use an Ice punch but thanks to our defense boost it doesn't do much and an earthquake will obviously wipe it out we then have orthworm but orthworm really can't do anything it's iron tails don't do any damage really so we can use a couple of razor leaves once it's knocked into range we'll use a synthesis to get healthy 
and then we can raise the lead for one last time, taking it out. Because we're healthy, even a critical hit ice spinner shouldn't quite take us out, but it doesn't happen anyway. It just does decent damage and we'll finish Quaquavel off with a super effective Razor Leaf. That's a lot of battles we've just done, but we made it past. However, we have eight deaths going into area zero. Here we run into AI Turo and it is up to us to take him down. We're going to start off with Ogapon and we've given it the rock type mask because that's what we need for this battle. We use a sword stance and they're going to use a sludge wave doing decent damage. Oh, and they poisoned us. I needed them not to poison us. Because we're poisoned, we're not going to be able to get another sword stance off because we're too low now. So we just have to go and attack it with a rock type ivy cudgel. This will lead iron hands in. And the reason we wanted the second sword stance is it means when we use horn leech, we would have actually taken it out. But it will just survive because of this and Drain Punch will finish us. We can then send in Scovillain, and Stomping Tantrum doesn't end up doing as much as I expected, as it recovers a lot of its health with a Drain Punch. I have a Citrus Berry for some health, and then I decide just to go for a Flamethrower, as a special move will manage to take it out here. This will bait in Iron Thorns, and unfortunately, an Energy Ball is super effective and targets its weak spots, so that will take that out. Then we have Iron Bundle, whose Drill Peck will do decent damage, but it'll only knock us to the red, meaning we can finish it off with one attack. However, Iron Jugulus is going to put an end to our reign of terror by using a flash cannon and taking Scovillain out. We're going to bring in Torterra and Juggy is actually going to end up missing the first air slash, allowing us to rock tomb and lower its speed. It's going to hit us next turn, but it's not even doing half health to us and we can hit another rock tomb, but it must have been a low roll as we don't quite take it out. Now, I want to be healthier, so I decide we're just going to synthesis until it misses an air slash, but it misses the first one. Like we had five attempts for it to miss. And it missed the first one. That's incredibly lucky. Now we're healthy and also faster. We can go for another rock tomb taking it out. Then Iron Valiant is going to come out. Luckily for us, its Spirit Break isn't doing too much and our Earthquake is doing a phenomenal amount of damage. This means we managed to just about creep in the win and we have beaten this Nuzlocke even if we did only have five members for the final battle. Thank you for your time and goodbye.